so how people behave in between each other. So what you are seeing now is the visualize the, the proximity level which is in between the two bodies. This is a touch moment. I go very fast. Of course, it's also sonorized. This prototype has been developed much further uh, last year. Uh, mostly, I want to say that this work um, uh, has been uh, performed a bit everywhere. And everywhere, uh, I got different uh, different experience from uh, uh, my performers and from people. Uh, in fact, because of the woman in the middle as object, they say. For me, the woman in the middle is a subject. Uh, but there is this uh, middle, uh, you know, that you don't know what it is, in fact. So this is in Taipei. That's the, 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 the this is another piece in uh, which I uh, mainly I, te I test myself uh, because um, after I was a bit um, you know when you start to work with performance uh, the time and uh, uh, the way people you know I do I, my pieces they exist in the moment there are visitors and audience this is the contrary of what the system of contemporary art likes they like the object to be separate from you. I put the visitor in the middle of the scene. Uh, so this piece is uh, to test me as an artist uh, to provide the, the most beautiful thing I know I can provide under stress condition, in fact. Uh, what is happening here? I have um, a sensor in my nose and in this uh, little uh, space, I activate and I create uh, a digital creature which uh, has six uh, states of life. And uh, what is happening is that uh, at the beginning I exhale uh, uh, around 14,000 digital uh, elements. This depends from the rate of my breath. And then I start to, let's say, push and inhale elements. And I have more and more complexity, let's say, in this. And for example, this is the moment where I, when I am performing, I am more happy. Because between me and the digital creature, there is a complete harmonia. We are in a symbiosis. Everything I do, also a very little breath, uh, she will respond in a very embracing, like, uh, wow, this is this is beautiful, right? But as soon as it's like life, you give, you give, and you give, and suddenly she starts to resist me. So this is the moment where I have to push a lot to be able to move and deliver to the audience the patterns, if not, if because, uh, and think that this is the space I'm working with. So uh, if, in fact, the title say I need to rest, but I don't rest at all. Uh, that's, uh, that's in fact the most uh, difficult performance for me. Uh, another piece, okay, this is a case uh, I performed last year in Museum Nacht here in Amsterdam and uh, uh, the CO2 level was so high because of course uh, beside the respiration sensor I also have a CO2 uh, level detection in the air I'm inhaling. Uh, if the CO2 is too high uh, then the shape uh, fades towards black. So I perform a black and white version at Museum Nacht because uh, the CO2 was very high. This is another piece. I was invited in Venice for the Biennale to cook, and I decided to make uh, edible lipstick, so I could a bit uh, explore uh, how it is our taste and how we engage ourselves when to use a piece you need uh, to use uh, your saliva. And uh, these are uh, the lipsticks, uh, which uh, have, in fact, uh, the Italian uh, recipe, like, you know, tomato, basil, garlic, cut pepper, and uh, the, the, um, the pesto, or the four cheese. And um, uh, the, the, the recipe came quite well. It was a long investigation, because uh, there were really much lipsticks and uh, really much taste as, as that. And um, of course, this is the menu. They all had different textures. 
and uh, uh, this was my kitchen. I will uh, perform. It's all made out of powder. I don't know if you know, maybe female know, um, know um, you know, the lipstick are made mostly with uh, petroleum. And uh, that's the Vaseline, and that's what you have. The first I had to do is to find a recipe which has a base which doesn't have Vaseline, because the Vaseline kills every other <laughs> taste, of course. And they really taste as food, and so I was preparing it. And of course, uh, this is uh, on this phrase. You know, there are people that uh, say, you know, that they say that we have the five tastes and that are distributed on the tongue. So. Now there is a new uh, way of saying that is not true. All the tongue is the tongue is full of sensors, and uh, we all perceive the taste everywhere. But there are still uh, uh, some biologists that do think that. Uh, that we perceive a difference. I might say that in case of the edible lipstick, this was what I want to do. And sometimes you perceive the sweet more than the salty, but uh, uh, this is very difficult to say, especially after the makeup, when uh, you eat uh, uh, this is uh, when uh, everything, when you put it on, when uh, this is the way you eat, uh, then it's difficult to understand where you are, where you are perceiving. But uh, this idea was um, nice in terms of behavior, so how people behave about it, and uh, also the fact, you know, the little... Um, this is something, the first uh, that uh, taste, uh, taste were uh, Evelyn and Dimitri at my place. And the uh, first they said it was like they felt, this is a huge compliment, they felt like uh, the mama bird that gives to the little bird the food. So this is beautiful. This was enough for me to go in Venice with this piece. I have just uh, one minute because it's a piece that I have done with Tets and was produced by Stein. <laughs> this was in 2010. I went to Stein with this idea and they were very supporting. And uh, uh, yeah, it was uh, with Stein, with the Netherlands Media Art Institute, uh, with the Claudio Buzior Foundation in Venice and of course optophonica. Um, this piece comes instead from another frustration that is, you know, people use my piece, so I want to link myself to my piece. So when they use my piece, I feel what uh, they are doing. And I feel it on my body. The idea comes, uh, you know, one of the ideas. There are so many, I don't know if you know the Milgram experiment. There are so many underlined under, the, under this, but you, Pygmalion, he felt in love with his own piece, which is uh, something that uh, never happens to an artist, that's for sure. So the idea is that uh, my work is uh, in an ambisonic cube. Is, uh, is a human uh, female a, um, able to deliver uh, sound uh, from her skin. And uh, as in life, uh, we human uh, left, uh, they left us behind sometimes, right? So I am outside, outside the door. I open the door to one visitor at a time. I let them entry. I don't know what is happening in the cube. And uh, what I know is that, uh, of course, that's the, the spherical sound in the cube. What I know is, uh, is uh, translated on, uh, with electrical pulses on my low chest and on my arms. Um, um, I collaborate here is uh, Stock, is, uh, the, is uh, in charge of the hardware design at this time for this work. Um, this is what is happening in the cube, in fact. And uh, uh, I think that uh, the most I can tell uh, collaborates on the Amazonic sound. And I will go very fast. I, I will show you just a few parts. This is the moment I attach myself to the cube physically. People understand what is happening as soon as somebody entering the cube, but they they perceive that something is happening to me. I have 90 volts on me. So I see that I have to go on because you don't see the part. But let's say because it's quite... Uh,
Well, you don't see much, but there is a naked body over there that you can do. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, everything that is happening between uh, her and the visitor is mapped into my body. That's, uh, that's the work. And uh, it's very nice in terms of behavior of visitors. It's very nice to see that usually people stand on the left side and visit the people that don't want to enter in the cube because they are afraid to, to give me pain. And on the right side, where is the door of the cube, there is always the line, because people want to see what is in the cube. And what I can say is the best compliment I got, it was when somebody said, you know what, I didn't like it much, because as soon as I entered in the cube, I forgot about you. And that's, for me, the best compliment, because uh, we are sensitive to pleasure, that's for sure. Thank you. Are there any specific questions for Sonia? I have a question uh, for... Please wait for the microphone, because uh, we, we, then the live stream can hear you. I have a question between uh, Tez and Sonia. You spoke that in Optophonica, both in, in, uh, in other works but also in your works, you focus a lot on the, the act of perception. Uh, can you speak, can you say a bit more about this because it's... Uh, yeah. Okay. Who goes first? As you like. Well, um, yes, I, I'll be far away this time. But. Okay. Um, yes, we. I mean, like we we are interested in creating the condition for for the perception to to be somehow expanded or enhanced to per, to see to perceive what, what's happening. So when we speak about perception, I mean, it's a, it's a very big uh, field. I mean, we can speak about many many things about this, but the only thing I really want to explain you maybe is, uh, that's why I, fo I, I said before we focus on this idea of immersive in environment. We call Optophonica right now as a laboratory for immersive art science, so this idea of immersivity is really about how do we create a condition to enhance uh, all you know, possible you know, perceptual modes. So it's different uh, every time. The, the most different thing is to do it outside of the laboratory because in a laboratory you can create, you know, you have your, we have one room, we call it the photon room. It's, it's, it's a room that we can, you know, completely uh, make like pitch black, dark. And that's already like even just darkness creates enough conditions for, for your senses to stretch, you know, to and, and reach, uh, you know, levels of, perception that, that are unusual, to say the least. So that's, I mean, it's a very simple thing, but yet it's a very difficult thing to, to achieve in normal condition. Like even here, if you will turn off all the lights, you will realize that there would be some light uh, coming from, and even a, uh, as, a, as one of the, my slides was saying, like even a, a, a single photon can be received by the human system. So. You know, it's a it's a tricky thing in a way, but at the same time, it's like it's something you have to experiment with, and that's why we do all these things. It's not that you know we we, we have some um, we try to, to, to have some basis for, for this like uh, rigorous kind of knowledge. On every time we so we, we experiment with something, we try to get as much information as we can on, on that level, but you will soon discover that there isn't enough information until you actually experiment with this. Uh, it's very difficult. I mean, Chris is another, I mean, Chris did a wonderful work in this sense by creating like JNDs. Uh, you know, well, maybe you can speak about JND, but it's a fantastic work in this sense where, you know, you're totally kind of isolated in order to you know, expand your your senses. So it's different every time, and every time you can discover a new way for, for doing this. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's very interesting. I mean, like you can try things, like exper really experiment. 
Uh, our laboratory is, uh, you know, it's all about experimenting things. So we discover by knowing on one side and trying also to search for information that is not uh, readily available like on, from official sources, let's say, and uh, just, you know, make it there, try it. Like, and it's not this, sometimes like an environment is not something you build in a day. So that's for sure. So, and, um, so it's not easy. That's, that's why I think you need an environment like a laboratory and share resources with others, share knowledge with others, so that this becomes possible. This is thing about perception is also really interesting because all these projects you see um, involve a kind of distributed perception. You know, it's 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 not just in the human body; it's in the environment, and it's in the environment, it's the technical environment, it's the social environment, uh, and 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 everything gets is this kind of blurring. You know, and that's what's quite interesting. It's like who's doing what, or what is doing what. Um, and, and that's where this strangeness comes of feeling, you know, is the, the, the techne, the techniques, are they just as live or as active as the human bodies? You know, it's not just that these are all, you, you see in, the, in all these works, you know, you don't see this purely anthropocentric worldview. You see this breaking down. You see this tension between the natural and the technical and the cultural and, um, and played out in people's experience you know and that's what's striking about it because you're you're never really sure yeah, yeah because it's like uh, you know if we we start from the the idea that uh, that the space is not uh, you know these uh, objects staying there uh, and maybe floating uh, or, but uh, or and with, uh, for example, somebody like uh, called God that controls everything. If uh, we kind of uh, delete for one second this idea, and we think that everything is uh, completely on fluxus and transformation, your body is in there, the space is this surrounding you. Then, of course, what uh, perception is about here, you know, is a moment in time, a location in time where you can perceive something different from what you perceive in your everyday life. All this work try to, uh, in my case, in a way, in Ted's case or in Chris's case, try all this work to to put you a bit more aware of the type of system that you can uh, achieve also with uh, also with uh, in fact education people do it through drugs but uh, we do it through, through art <laughs> yes. well I have, a, I have a question for for for, for, for all of you I think um, and Kurtis call himself a designer. You said, you know, I'm, I'm all these things. I'm just not a musician. Well, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but you are amongst the, all these. You're, you know, I feel very welcome. <clears throat> yes, you're, you awesome. are more than welcome. Thank you. Um, but you know, we're all involved in, in either design or art or music in, in some kind of way. We've been talking about this this whole notion of of, of complexity. Where where is the design? Where is the making? Hmm. You know, what what. What is it that I can make? We've all been, you know, talking about how complex systems unfold and behave, and, and you know, Chris talked about uh, um, behavior rather than interactivity. But where, you know, where's Actually, the idea of design, of intentional tweaking of what? I, I think, if I may respond, yeah. uh, what for me is quite interesting about hearing your stories and being in this context is that I think, uh, I'm not a musician, but uh, you as musicians or more audio related uh, interested people, you already have a lot of things in place to to deal with complexity. And I wonder... Uh, well, tell, us, tell us what those things are. Um, I think you know better than me, <laughs> but, but I think uh, other domains can learn from, from that, for sure. And I, I wonder, I would, I would like to, because I could answer it, but I would like to <laughs> throw the questions to, sure, to sure. my colleagues. Well, it's, it's one of the reasons um, why we do have this theme, because, I, you know, we do think there's, there's we, we musicians do have an understanding of these yeah, things. Yeah, so what could, uh, the is, is, what could a city planner learn from your practice? What could a financial operator learn from your 
practice. I think there is some something already some uh, some knowledge in this domain that's very <coughs> interested for interesting for the rest of the society right now. And uh, so my question is, what is it? What what what? What are the methodologies that mm. have been <laughs> developed that you would throw to these city planners and financial <coughs> operators? Maybe you should answer, Chris. Chris, this is, uh, yours. This is yours. I also kind of give them the micro. We're all listening, yeah. Or <coughs> listening with their yeah. with their other senses. I was going to say, we we attention. have we all have ears. I think that's a really important thing to tell city planners. Yeah. It's clearly it's clearly not what's at issue right now because people want design. But how can you design when you don't don't know how to do that? It's the whole question about systems again. Yeah. How can the European bank design the economy when they can't? But they yeah. want to tell us they can because that's what we want them to say. No, but but in the fact, if they said no, no, what no. they could. Maybe part of the problem is then that they don't have their perceptual sensibilities in place to understand yeah, that, what's going that, on. That, that, is, that is definitely it. I mean, and the thing is, is that uh, there's a fantastic quote from, from Bruno Latour in an essay on design where he said, you know, design in the past used to be called re-looking. So we designed the surfaces of things. We designed the surface of buildings, or we designed the surface of this glass. And, you know, but now design has not, is no longer that. Design is about totally designing systems, right? But the problem is, the people that design those systems aren't listening, aren't smelling, aren't tasting, aren't, aren't, aren't seeing, and aren't touching. You know? And so they basically are designing things outside of you know, human experience, thinking that they're going, to, and, and they want this level of complexity, but that that's a real tension that's going on. And I, I it's so interesting because I'm always, I'm in a design department actually, and I'm constantly, my colleagues are always like, well, design is visual. I'm like, well, we have ears. What happened to that? You know, and the, the, the eye works very different than the ear, you know, so all of these ways in which time operates in, the, in perception, these are things that have to be taken into consideration in, in, in city planning, in the design of anything, right? But everything is designed as like, well, whatever it looks like, it's good, you know, and so... Well, yeah, that, that, I know that's, that, that, is, that, is, that is something, an idea that's hard to fight, I, I, I agree with you, but... Uh... And of course, it's true that you know we cannot design our systems the way we thought we could. But my question would be, well, what can we design? Whether you know, in, in, in the best sense of the word, you know, which is not only visual but does take into account you know, where, what's the scope of our agency as makers? You know, if we want to design, you know, I, I've told you at the beginning, we were playing with this idea of design instruments that can grow. Well, what it turned out to be quite difficult. It turned out to be very difficult because you know it's 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 almost like a, a, a you know contradiction in terms. Well, uh, n not according to economics, everything's about growth. So. <laughs> not according to, uh, to economics. So. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. Sure. Be sure to uh, yeah to use the microphone. Yeah. Well, let the microphone just, come to you. Um, let's say. <laughs> I just had one time uh, thought about talking about the work of Michael Prime. I don't know if you know him. He's a biologist. He lives in Ireland. He's been releasing audio for 20 years under names like morphogenesis and negative entropy. And he uses just this classical biology thing where you translate signal from plants into mm -hmm. uh, into electric signals and uh, he makes sound with it in groups and I love these performances because like an hour piece he he wouldn't bring a plant to a performance he would select he will come to a place and wow can I borrow this plant and he takes his plant to the performance and the performance is a part of the uh, the plant is a part of the performance and and you clearly sense that this plant is is like changing through the time and, and becoming a part of the space and the situation. I mean, Michael Prime also says that plans clearly recognize people. That's, that's really definitive proof by now. Okay. So when I saw this little cactus, I said, oh, is he going to do this? No, I really like these performances with the plan not being an artificial intelligence, but an intelligence and nature intelligence in the performance. You know. <laughs> So was it a question? Or I, uh, because I agree with, with what you say. Um, it's OK if I ask I another question. It's more of a general question. Um, and everybody, but especially at Corda, I guess. Um, because you, you talked about this gardening complexity and took it in a very, uh, and, and in a certain direction. And I certainly did. Yeah, yeah. But, um, 
talking about this, um, you talk more of a sense like almost nature versus nurturing. Like you're talking more more about a tabula rasa where we're needing to learn to uh, yeah to work with all these new new systems, like even technological systems that are living on their own maybe. But um, for me, like a financial system that would be uh, like an ecosystem, as you suggested, that scares me a little bit because for me, money and a financial system is like only removing us. It's a metaphor, it's a symbol. And um, that's what I think is the great value of art is that's one of the, well, at least uh, at last ways of truly expressing yourself without the need of words or whatever, like symbols. And I just wanted to ask like a general question, what's your feeling about nature versus nurture? Because you took it in a nurture way, of, at least that's my interpretation. And just what's your thought on that? Yeah, well, first of all, I think uh, the distinction between that you... I, I, I fully agree that if you look at the financial system as an ecology, uh, that's quite scary. And if you look at technology as a as a f force that we are co-evolving well, with, why is that? Why is it scary to look at the financial system as well, an ecology? I mean, because I think right now the way we perceive our technology <coughs> is uh, very much as something that's alien to us, and we opposed to that. We have nature and art and that's sort of the I think the cultural perception right now today and I think that's why it's scary because it's a different way of looking at things uh, it is, and, it, and, and I think it's scary but also fascinating well, is it, but isn't the problem that the fact you know that, that we look at it as some, something that exists outside us I mean I even hear banks say that <laughs> well that's just how the system works yeah. well, you're part of the system guys you know the, yes the, we all are and, and, yeah. and a lot of these discussions are about you know they are about and, and you know, the objectification of the outside world which you are a part of you are an agent in that world you know you cannot remove yourself from it i think that's one of that's one of the things that intrigues me most about these complex systems i'm part of them right and i want to know what the scope of my agency is yeah but i think the scary part comes in when you realize that you have become part of a system or are part of a system that you maybe don't like or that's maybe not even good for you at all times and then I understand why you say it's sure. Yeah, I, I, I mean, of course, yeah, that's that's evident. But but. But I mean, Stan, Stan and I were talking at the break, and the irony just reading in the Herald Tribune yesterday about you know the austerity measures in Greece. Say, well, we have to save the banks because the bank. It's like, well, why should we save the banks? They're the ones who created the problem in the first place. So I mean, again, they're, they're part know, of the problem, not the solution. Right. I mean, they, yeah. you know. So and and I I think it's interesting too is this go back to the question of like top down planning you know versus bottom up this kind of which is not so easy this basic up down or bottom up model but it's this question about sharing agency um, and I think again all all of our work is very interested in trying to do that is try to acknowledge that there is there that there aren't just humans in the world there are other forces you know and, and in fact you know right now this discussion on so many fields. In politics and economics, in sociology and anthropology, everybody is talking about the non-human, the post-anthropocentric, material vitalism. I mean, all of there's this huge question. One, because we're dealing with a completely out of control system or a world that we we're in, and we're wondering, like, well, how is that being shaped? Are we supposed to control it? Is it supposed to shape itself? Is it shaping us? I mean, there's whole this whole kind of dialogue and tension is going on. But I, I, I wanted to, to ask Court because, you know, in a way, you know, you're positing this kind of cut between, this cut is happening between nature and culture. And when, when was it that nature was ever separate from technology? You know, I mean... It, never, never, you know, never. What, what, so, that's his point. That's my point. But but why why are we in the born and made now? And because in a way, the natural cultural division, 
you know, according to some some that argue this, you know, saying this is this is a, 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 a kind of symptom of modernism. And then if you go back to so-called pre-modernism, where you're looking at other kinds of societies, they never made cuts between the economic system, the no, political think, system, what's yeah. natural, what's cultural. Yeah. This is some construction of the West that that, that wants to set this up. You know? So certainly, construction of the West, and it started a uh, little over a century ago. Uh, happened when industrialization came, and then people realized. Uh, we are not living on the countryside anymore and people started to romanticize the, the countryside and uh, romantic images of nature uh, were introduced and they are still playing today and I want to tear them down let it, let it be very clear uh, that I think that's, that model is not working anymore so indeed whereas nature and technology are often by many people seen as separate they are now at least merging or even trading places. That's the, the, the change in perception that I think we are witnessing now, that's happening. And um, the next step is then, how do we deal with these uh, new uh, forces out there that were created by people, but that are now next natural, next natural forces, one could say. How do we cope with them? And there we still have to find uh, find some uh, some answers and I think musicians can be very helpful because the remark about we listen that's that's an important one that you have your perception in place to uh, to perceive and to sense what is going on in order to to garden it or, or help it grow force it in a direction that um, well I've, at least I think we the smart thing we have to do is force it into a certain direction that is helpful for humans and perhaps also our fellow species. Yeah. Because if we don't think about that, then uh, then you see the balance that biodiversity is decreasing, technodiversity is well, increasing, and at a certain moment you are sitting in a cloud of smog and you don't know how to breathe anymore. Whereas economic growth is uh, is booming, that would be not a, a great scenario for me. It's, it's time to introduce morality into these into these ideas. Yeah, I mean, but also about scale. If a you if a human being could just uh, put themselves in their own scale, which they are nothing in relation to universe. Of course, yeah. That already will help a lot. That will help. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You are nothing but. A... I don't know if it if it will help. It's good to know and it's good to be modest that in the end we are just this little tiny layer on the on earth and even if uh, if we destroy the whole climate which we can do then it will only be this one planet that's not that's not uh, <laughs> who cares, you know, who cares? Yeah, well, the sun, futile anyway. the sun doesn't even care let alone uh, the human uh, the universe and anyhow in in five or ten billion years i don't know exactly the sun will explode and it will be an end to everything in life on earth that's true but still i have to decide in the morning what I will de do after I wake up, and I think that's still a very relevant uh, question. It's a little bit more smaller question, but it's important, I think. Yeah, right. I mean, like if you're able to formulate such a thought, that means you are intelligent enough to act differently. Hopefully. Yes. So, you know, I yeah. think one has to believe in, uh, in, in real consciousness, like in, in, the, in ways to develop this consciousness. And I think, at least from my side, from our side, is the, the kind of work we, we do is also is especially directed to this idea that you can, you know, improve your, you can improve your perception in order to improve your consciousness, in order to embrace, you know, the, the uh, wider uh, vision of reality and act with it. It's not, you know, you can't be passive. I mean, you can't be passive for the simple fact that you, you are not a passive being. You are, you are a being of life, like and life uh, will operate with you anyways. So, so. But you have to be conscious of what you do and you know the, how yeah. you frame your actions in what kind of but that's, I think it's very fun. Yeah, you have to go to very simple things like we, uh, you know for me I, I, I agree with most of your you know ideas and perspectives and things but I think that's too complex mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah perhaps you know 
it's it's this idea that you know that things are complex and become this kind of um, unachievable. Well, but that's too the, deep you know, but that's the answer it. the banks give too. I don't like that answer. That's what the banks say. Well, it's too complicated. You know, the whole yeah, system works like this. I must. And nobody takes yeah. responsibility because everything. You know, I, you know I'm, 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 I'm only doing. You know, this. I'm only making sure my shareholders. You know, I'm only. May, yeah, may I'm trying really to say careful. something a bit different. I'm trying to say that I think there is a necessity to re-educate ourselves, to re-educate our That's children, nice. ourselves, to very basic things, very basic, to review many, like basically yes. everything. And, you know, to be humble to the point that we accept that we really don't know, well, you know, don't know anything, and trying, you know, we are, and trust our intelligence. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Where's the microphone? Is or, uh, that's basically what I, what I was getting at, actually, because um, you have, I don't know who said it, but if you take every life on Earth away except the humans, in uh, 50 years, like the whole planet will be gone and everyone will be dead, and whatever. <laughs> and if you take the humans away, uh, in 50 years, life will flourish, you know. And that also has to do for me with all this new technology. Um, should we like embrace it, like you, uh, like you're saying, as a as a new part of our nature, or should we maybe take it back? As uh, I, for, I, I forgot your name, Kurt. I don't think you're saying we should take it back, right? Well, that's, that's what, what I was saying. thinking. You, 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 you can't, it's not either or. Uh, yeah. Again, w w we're technical. Te technology You can't is, think of yourself in you technology. We Anthropologically, are we are technical. No, the no, minute you, the I minute understand you, that. And humans I, I stand up with their hands and can hold a tool, uh -huh. that's, tec that's technical. Yeah. So yeah, we're yeah, already think, born with technical yeah. senses. Mm -hmm. you know? It's not about like machines. It's about the fact that you can grasp a tool and extend yourself as a human out into the world. That's already what techne or technology is. But I think the fact that you now have to say this and explain this exemplified that there are still work to be done because your your perception of technology is different and now you are being explained that we are technical by by nature. I think it's quite curious that not everyone on the planet knows this. Because somehow there's there's a, there's this romantic image of, of nature. Let's go back to nature. Let's go back to nature. I think we need to go forward to nature. We, I don't we, know exactly we go back to means. nature, we to drive to it. Forward so. to the next nature, that's Groot's point. You know? right. I, for me, it's important to separate industrialism and economy from technology. Because also yeah. if you look back to Tesla technology and yeah. all those things, it's clear Good that point. all the best yeah. things have not come out because they didn't make money. So for me, I think it's, it's, you, you cannot think about industrialism and technology as the same thing. Because a lot of things are produced and destroying our planet, but to break down, you know, because then people buy new things. And that's not high technology. I mean, just in short. So well, part of, part of what's happening is, of course, now that we have more network type technologies rather than, than, than industrial technologies, it does make things less, you know, easy to control. Yeah, and the good thing about hierarchies to, to, is that you can to actually have control two ideas stuff. about what's high technology and what's industrialism and yeah. economy. That it's not necessarily one thing. No, you're I right. I think a lot of black Absolutely. operations and stuff. And, but the, you know, the big and, drawback of networks is And that then there's a sentence like, the most advanced aliens do not arrive here in crafts. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, whether we believe or not. That was the technology part I was talking about, not like forming an axe or a but, farmer. Yeah. That's also technology. Like I was talking about the future and uh, how we take it from here and that kind of technology, like the whole network thing that's going on right now and industrialism and, and, and that's also a part of that. And should we embrace it like we're talking about it uh, here or should we... Uh, well, I guess the, the, the idea of the, the point of consciousness that, that, that has made was very important. You know, mm -hmm. when you are conscious of the way it works, the, your relationship to the, the, well, the thing that you're part of, you, you can you can at least start I perceiving think, whether you know what happens. He's a spiritual being because if now yes. if there is yeah. this underlying statement that uh, is about this crisis, we don't want to say. If we are speaking a bit about this, but in fact there is the crisis because people spend money they don't have. So if they spend so much, it's uh, about having things. It's not about uh, 
you know, we are speaking about perception. Well, that's why I, that's why I want the to bring morality into the issue. Of human being, there yes. is, there is, you know, where's the morality that's, that's in these connected. complex systems? They're not that's amoral. connected. Well, they may be amoral. It looks structure. very uh, cheap, as we we are saying, but in right. fact, it is very much connected. I am convinced that Ever? the spiritual, as a we are agents. Well, we can we bring use, that into I the would picture. say agents of emotions in the world. So imagine how I, how much yeah. I am hippie. So. <laughs> oh shit! We have an old hippie at the table. Here. That's. <laughs> but we have uh, some more in the audience. I'm sure. <laughs> yes, here is one. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you've been trying. Yeah, to say I just I just had a comment because I I feel I'm um, I'm also a very body based artist and a vocalist and all that, and I think it's um, one of the things what I what is very interesting in the work that you do is exactly this, that you are taking care of the human senses and their perception. Because I think also sometimes we have this little bit this uh, modernistic thing, like you have just this computer and you're just staring at this computer and then, I don't know, it's a bit of this kind of like, we become a little, a little bit tunnel visioned and we, uh, we sort of praise the thinking part of ourselves a bit too much. So we have this thinking machine which has this tunnel vision but then we kind of like I think it's important to to come to our body like more sensually also because then we can receive also this kind of um, even Einstein and these guys uh, they've used these things that they're kind of dozing off a little they go to this alpha state and then they get like a like a new idea so it's somehow, I think it's very important for us, just in general, to, to, to stay connected with that part of ourselves. Because if we try to just do much like thinking, uh, a solution, there it's, we go a bit wrong. And, uh, and I think also like it's very, very, also again, like very simple things, but, um, but uh, yeah, just to feel, for example, connection to the nature. I mean, just to, I don't know, be aware of your whatever breathing, you be aware of the sun, be, I mean, just this simple thing is a bit like, it becomes a bit zen-like, some kind of spiritual thing, but I, I still think like, we have to, we no, have to combine no. this, this technological thing. Ah, it looks like we're spiritual. afraid to say yeah, these things, like see, it's ridiculous, you, you know, yeah, like, exactly. why should we, should we be yes. afraid to say, we it's want so to bad. science more, we want to, to get back to our Absolutely. potential, yeah. you know, and, and for example, of being I, real, like, sensing beings. Yeah, like, I'm, it's, um, it's, that's the paradox. It's like yes. you know that, and that's why where I I'm we a are bit, not you know, just the careful with your thing no, because yes, it, 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 okay. it kind of is back. takes this for granted. I just right? I would just like oh, to oh, just oh, comment oh. a little bit also because I felt also this because I'm a vocalist and sometimes I really feel the pressure that I should start doing also the weird like I have to use some equipment to make the voice weird and whatever. And then actually it's also something I would like to bring into this also this pure voice the power of it. If you just feel the pure human voice it just you know it can be just amazing yeah, but, just but that but that voice also re resonates in a room you know and so Absolutely, that that room course. transforms that voice you know, I know but so that's, yeah. well I, I do I do want to you know, let's let's I think it's it's important I agree with you that there's too much emphasis on thinking um, but there's more than the body to oppose to thinking. And there's also this concept of intuition, which has nothing to do per se with the body. You know, you can have a mental intuition, mm -hmm. you can have a spiritual intuition even. Uh, so there's all these concepts it's that is... Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, uh, thinking is just explicit thinking. If you look there's, up there, intuition... There's in, a in question, the she's very... Anxious. Oh, sorry, yeah. Can we say that an ethics dealing with complexity would involve not only thinking, but also yeah. Yes, exactly. Yes. Exactly. Well, all the, these, all these different. I think layers that. Of, I think that's the yeah, really. That's the this, I think that's the really core word ethics. And, and I was just thinking the whole time as we were talking, like the, the, we're interested in the senses. And my question is, can a, a kind of charging or or uh, intensification of the senses lead to another kind of ethics? That's really the question. We, we have to keep asking ourselves, what do we want? What is good or bad about this? You know, you, you know, you, you're, you're pointing out things. I, I don't like that. I don't want it to go in that direction. We all hate the banking system. But who, who can decide that? I mean, like that's well, a we, very dangerous we, question. Yeah. No, no. Well, you know, but yeah, of course it's I a dangerous question. I think you know, it's a question that only. But you can't say observing a, a little uh, baby, you can answer. No, but you can't say we need ethics you know, and then say you know it's too it's difficult. Not to conditioned by. No, but if you say we need ethics, this is it. The, you are forced to say what's good and what's bad, even though we're all in the sort of relativism sphere. If you don't want to say what's good and what's bad, you're amoral. 
Well, you're, forced to, make you're, you're forced to make That's decisions the, about things, we right? We make decisions yeah. that, that change the course of things, even even if, if they're sometimes local. So, But that's why I like the idea of consciousness. You have mm -hmm. to be conscious of what it is that you do. And and maybe even if, if it's even being conscious of what your intentions are. If, you know, because some, sometimes you don't, you can't predict the outcomes of your actions. Yeah, but you have to be, you know, you have to be specific about where you want this to go. You, there is an yeah, ethical question. Oh, there's a big question in the back there. Um, yeah. Oh, microphone, you wait for the mic. Yeah, for me, uh, it feels like um, uh, a rational approach to complex things just doesn't work because um, yeah. with rationality, you try to find an answer, a singular way, a set of rules that always apply. And complex things, like, like we've seen, I, I think, in every one of the stories, yeah. um, have some dynamics that just don't, uh, that they, they can't be predicted. So I think that all of this is all about uh, alternatives to rational approaches. Um, just because rationality doesn't um, yeah, work with dynamic uh, processes. Well, that, that's why we had, a, we had a session this morning called intuition, uh, oh, because yeah. you, you know we need to intuit. Yeah, but intuition is of part things. of it. But I yeah, think absolutely. there's like, and there's a section tomorrow on improvisation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not being able to, to, to control what's happening. Who 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 thinks to themselves, well, you know, it's late enough by now. Maybe we should go. <laughs> Is there, is there is there anyone who has like a, an great. urgent question He's that they're burning? Because burning uh, they don't want to yeah. finish. It's great. Thank yeah. you. I can, I can say one more thing. Joel, which I, yeah. I think the issue really is about re-examining democracy because that's something that's really in crisis right now yeah. because we're losing faith in democracy from places where we have populism rising up. What is so, democracy? Yeah, exactly. What is it? Well, it's a very new thing. I mean, in some countries, like Italy, for example, it's a very new thing. Oh, are you right? talking <laughs> not, not so much newer than is it is in, say, Egypt there, yesterday, but, right? Yeah. And in other places, like, say, in Holland and England, it's a little older, but that's because they lived in a situation where they were leveraged by colonialism, okay? So they had a democracy which is leveraged by colonialism. Now mm -hmm. we have a new situation. It's post-colonial, and we're we have to examine no, but Joel, Everything about democracy. Are you are you are you are you saying it's about how we make decisions together? Yeah. Okay. That's it's a, it's a systems question, and the ethics comes you in. Know, because that's, that's you know the, democracy is sort of an answer, uh, in, yeah. you know, as to yeah. how we make. And it. for example, musicians do have something ethical. to contribute because improvisation is an example of how spontaneous order can be achieved by a group of people, and. It's something which we can all experience and enjoy. In fact, that's maybe the reason we're so interested now in spontaneous music as opposed to yeah. imperial music. Yeah, or spontaneous, spontaneous yeah. systems. You know, I mean, yeah. we're looking for where those, where does that system yeah. exhibit something I didn't program in it? You know, because yeah. I, I was reading just yesterday an interview from a, um, of a mathematician on the newspaper. He won the Floss Prize, a very important one. He's a French guy, quite young. And uh, he was saying, uh, mathematics is the language of nature, right? And we don't understand. Mathematicians don't understand the nature because mathematics is just a convention. Now they re reach that point. So complexity is there for them. They know they make their mathematical models. Everybody uses their own way of dealing with it. But the idea, the basic idea, is that is not understandable, not now. Mm -hmm. And we, as human beings, we work for them in statistics. We all are numbers in statistics. I don't have any name in, in, in any economic study, right? You either. I have a gender. That's another. Uh, Let's not open the gender question because then it's, it's already uh, quarter past six. That's it. So I am. A, I have a gender. And I have an age, and I have a nationality. This is what. Uh, and I have a job. This is what I am. And if you match all these parameters, comes the statistic, and that's uh, how you decide in terms of diagrams uh, who is going to have more, less, etc. So we are so far from this way of thinking about human being uh, that, uh, you know, we can just state that uh, we are very far. Well, do you, do you, <laughs> that's, we, that's not what we want. What we do want is, not, is... So maybe we don't know what we want, because for me to say what I want, where we should go is too much, but I know what I don't want. That's... Okay. I have just one more commentary. Oh, oh, wait, wait for the microphone. 
Yeah, so I'm just thinking because I, I'm really about this thing of like how good it would be for the politicians and, uh, and uh, whatever they're called, bankers. Or